How to repair a Birmingham dribbler, part five, the steam test. This was only a partial success as the wax fuel tablets did not give sufficient heat to boil the water constantly. But after giving it a bit of help using a mini blowtorch, the engine ran until the head of steam was depleted. This clip is from a previous episode when I was test running the chassis using compressed air. And it seems to run quite well. I was running it on about 10 or 15 psi. I've had this engine for many years and it's been broken for many years. I rebuilt it to give it to my friend James Evans, who's in the workshop with me today. So just in case you think my hands look weird, they don't. They belong to my friend James. Time for the steam test, part one. Remove the safety valve to put the water in and also remove the plug from the front to let the air out. These plugs in the front and rear of the boiler are level plugs. As soon as water runs out of the hole in the front of the boiler, I will know that there is sufficient water to start the steam test. I'm just manning the camera on this one. James is doing all the operational things. I found my old Mamod funnel, and here James is very carefully filling the boiler using spring water. This is no better than tap water from a limescale point of view. It's just very convenient because I was drinking from this bottle before we decided to fill the boiler with it. Because of the small size of the Mamod funnel, it did take quite a long time. And as the safety valve hole in the top of the boiler is quite large, I could have used a bigger funnel, but that's in the main workshop and I couldn't be bothered going to get it. The water is now dribbling out of the front, as you would expect from an engine called a Birmingham dribbler, but that's not the real reason for the name. When these engines are actually running on a surface like a floor, they dribble water and oil on the floor, and that's why they're called dribblers. I just sat it on a brass block to elevate it from the bench, and if you keep your eye on the area around this brass block, you will see, over time, once the engine is in steam, Quite a lot of dribbling will be taking place. James wiped up the water that dribbled out of the front of the boiler. And here he's holding a box of 20 Mamod wax solid fuel tablets. To be honest, I think these are unsuitable for this firebox. It's not a meths burner. I tried putting some meths in it, but it just leaked out. Thinking back when I first got this, I filled the tray entirely with the small tablets that used to be available called Meta tablets, M-E-T-A. And I also remember that it did run quite well until the axle broke. We could get more of these wax tablets in by putting them on their end, but I think the fire would be too voracious. So I think it's probably a good idea to start off with two and see how we go on. Refitting the firebox to the engine is surprisingly fiddly, and here I'm explaining to James how to do it. You have to squeeze the top together slightly. Move it towards the back, right? Right to the back, yeah. Sit it on there. When I was running this engine using compressed air, I ran it on a wooden block, but obviously the firebox would be a problem as it would burn the wood. So I cut a slab of brass to rest the engine on. Now it's lubrication time and it's dribbling already. You need to lubricate every moving part except the front axle bearings because they're currently doing nothing. Eventually the lubrication sequence was complete. We're using bearing oil, not steam oil. The very thick superheater steam oil is not really suitable for very small steam toys. After about 10 minutes some steam started to appear. And that's why it's a good idea to leave the steam valve open so the steam can get to the cylinders and warm them up to avoid a hydraulic lock. Currently there isn't much pressure, not enough to start the engine anyway. But eventually, after persuading the wheel that it needs to rotate, it rotated all by itself.
Altogether, though, it was very poor, and if you look at the yellow flame coming from these wax tablets, which is dirtying the boiler that I polished up, you can see there is insufficient heat. We just left the engine for a while, just sat there, raising steam, hoping we would get enough pressure to make it go. Eventually, from the other side, so as not to get his hand in the way of the camera, James spun the wheel and off it went. But not for long, let's try again. I suggested to James that he pointed his small blowtorch at the boiler as well to raise more steam. And this is what he's doing behind the engine. It made a considerable difference to the steam generation. In fact, it started to pick up speed and ran well. Even though the wheels are a bit wobbly, it's OK, it works. The steam test is complete, at least it runs, although not very well, because there's not enough heat. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.